founder of Deadspin, out with the new thriller. His book is titled The Time Has Come. Well, good to see you, man. Of course, thank you. Okay, we don't want to talk about his book well, yet. Well, we're going to talk we? about your book in a minute. We well, want congratulations to the Mets for getting five wins in the standings without Homer last night. Congratulations. You've offset the last two weeks. Uh, that's <laughs> going to be great. Right. We're I struggling a bit. We're struggling a bit. I won't bring up the Cardinals. Oh, yeah, we're not doing great either. We want to go there. <laughs> no, yes. thank you. Um, which the Rays lost last night, but yeah. what they're doing in baseball is just stunning. That was a rare loss for them. They're 32-12. Yeah. and 12 kind of running away with the AL East, which is a great division already. How are they doing it? Why are they so good? Yeah, the thing about them is they're, it's kind of systemic, right? This is something they build. There's, they didn't go get a big free agent in the offseason yeah. or, or have suddenly have a guy pop up. Listen, Wander Franco is like their, their superstar, right? And he's having his superstar season that they thought. But really, they're great everywhere, and that's kind of the dirty secret of baseball. We get yeah. the idea of like, oh, we got to have the big stars. we got to have the stacked rotation. If you're just really good everywhere, not great at everything, but really good everywhere, you build up, and next thing you look, you're in the top of the division where everyone's spending eight times more. You are. I, I said, they, I they said they're running away with it. That's an overstatement because right. the Orioles are only three and a half back. Yeah. The a Orioles team that has are even another, less of a payroll. <laughs> exactly. Another team doing what the Rays are doing. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean, the thing is, again, they do prove, Tampa proves, the Orioles are proving right now. You don't need to spend a ton of money. Right. Well, the Mets won last night, and for, for Mika's daughter, thank God, because she lives and <laughs> yeah. breathes the Mets as much as we all live and breathe. Uh, the the um, the, the Red Sox, except when they're playing the Cardinals. Of course. Uh, of late. <laughs> but um, yes. but I, the, thing that, the thing that really irritates me every time I watch Tampa is what an extraordinary organization they are, what an extraordinary coach they have. I mean, the players are in it day in and day out. They're, 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 they're just breaking records left and right. Um, and they have 14 people in the stands. Yeah. <laughs> I, and is, I, 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 listen, I, I hate to... You know, I hate to pick on Tampa here, but I think we've given Tampa fans enough of a of a chance to, to support them. They're not going to support them. When's Major League Baseball going to let them go to Nashville or go to Montreal or go somewhere that will support this team the way they need to be supported? Yeah, and I think there's an issue with where the stadium specifically is in that area, but I don't think there's any question. They've had a really good team for a really long time, and it hasn't really paid off. When I'm in Maine... I drive four hours to go see the Red Sox. Yeah. <laughs> right. so, yeah. No, I agree. I, agree. I, I know. I agree. Sick I get tired of hearing the one. Oh, I understand. It's on the I understand. wrong side of the bay. <laughs> really? Fair. Four fair, fair. hours in an F-150 <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah. go see the Red Sox play fair, a game. So fair. I don't want to hear the whining from them. Uh, of course. I, I drove three hours to see Cardinal games growing up as, as well. Yeah. I totally understand that. I think now that the A's situation is starting to get closer to being resolved, it's not entirely resolved yet, but they've really been kind of waiting for that situation to get resolved before. Or they can get to Tampa and then they can start start talking potentially about expansion. So uh, I think if you want a team in Nashville, it would not shock me if that's something. No, I just don't, I just don't want a team in Tampa, Mike. Yeah. I want the best organization in baseball, top to bottom, to have fans. Uh, they have the fans they deserve. Well, and you got to move them to Orlando. Florida can only com I, I would submit Florida can only maintain one club, one yeah. major league team. And barely. And, yeah. <laughs> barely. Miami and Tampa Bay are both barely. Yeah. Yeah. Move them to Orlando, see if it works there. But, 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 but yeah. oddly enough, I would submit that the Tampa Bay fans contribute to Tampa Bay teams' continued greatness because the front office doesn't have to worry about the outrage right. that right. will happen if they move a guy or if they don't sign a guy. Yeah. I think that's right. I think it was certainly just like Boston. Every time, yeah. they, exactly, <laughs> every time the Yankees or the front office or the Red Sox front office coughs, everyone freaks out. Yeah. Tampa can do all sorts of weird things that nobody notices and yeah. nobody cares about, and they try not to be really smart as opposed to having all of us yelling over the back page. Yeah, right. and by the way, let's bring in Jonathan Mir because speaking of somebody that says, hey, 162 games, Nothing to worry about. You and Lupica, just models of like, <laughs> the Tampa fans. Yeah. Even keel, always. Yeah. Even keel. That's me. Don't live and die on every single pitch. Uh, Will, let's talk about some of the teams that have actually really disappointed so far this year, including teams that have spent a ton of money. We opened with one of the Mets. Mets fans everywhere uh, deeply distraught how their season started. But how about also the San Diego Padres, which have this yeah. lineup of star superstars added to them this offseason, and yet there are several games under 500 that got swept again by the Dodgers. Yeah, it's frustrating, too, because the Padres are a team that you want to see do well. That's the team that's doing yeah. it the right way. They're well, the only team in San not Diego. Not over the next three games. Well, no, sorry. Of course. Not when, not when they're playing the Red Sox. But generally speaking, that's what you want from baseball. You want a 
theoretically smaller market team that's the only team in its market spending big. They have an owner that's really tried to go out and get guys. It hasn't worked out so far. I actually go on San Diego Padres Radio. I talked to Tony Gwynn Jr. It's very oh, cool to get to talk yeah. to Tony Gwynn Jr. And uh, I talk to them once a week. They are really down right now. I try to reassure them there's still a lot of time left in the season. The Padres have a lot of good players. I'd be more worried about, say, the Mets or my Cardinals even uh, than I would maybe a little bit more about the Padres. But that you want a team like that to get because we spent all this time saying spend money. Spend money. Don't just have it be the Mets. Don't just have it be the Red Sox. Have a team like the Padres spend money. They've done that. I feel like that's a team we should really should probably try to get behind. And by the way, we could talk about every team in the league, but the Pirates, we got to give them a shout out. Oh, yeah. Whoa, yeah. Spending no money. Oh. They're a game out of first place. They're having a great season, too. But let's talk about the time has come. Yeah, yes. Your next novel, How Lucky, was excellent, was a big hit, um, entertaining, yeah. deep. Thank and you. this one is that, too. Also set in Athens, Georgia, where mm -hmm. you live. And it has sort of echoes and themes of the stuff we talk about on this show. A lot. Yeah, it's set in Athens, Georgia, home of the two-time defending college yes. football national champions. So dumb. I feel like I have to say that. Uh, but yeah, it, it takes place in the same universe. That uh, this is kind of inspired by uh, kind of the Robert Altman shortcuts or Paul Thomas Anderson Magnolia, nice. where you follow six different characters throughout the course of their day, and something a culminating event happens. The culminating event in this is a woman named Tina, who's actually been kind of alone during the pandemic, kind of uh, gone down some online rabbit holes and believes something terrible is happening at this pharmacy, and she has to stop it. So she announces it beginning of the book I'm gonna go out and stop what's happening and then we follow the three people mm -hmm. the six people throughout the book and where they all land at that place in the book it's hopefully funny hopefully suspenseful and uh, hopefully a, a fun quick read and when I say it has themes of the things we talk about there's some January 6 echoes Without in question. there there's pizza gate there's yeah. a lot of that QAnon stuff. she really truly kind of believes she's lost she's had a lot of tragedy in her life she really has kind of lost her way and really believes that she wants to help and in a way that is completely unproductive and potentially destructive this is such a great turn for you we've known you as a sports mm -hmm. guy you know everything there is to know about sports but to see the successful move how did this come about for you to sit down and start writing novels you know I was originally inspired to start writing as I said with how lucky for my, about my son's best friend had spinal muscular atrophy which was the disease that the, the lead character and how lucky had and I and it's I have to say at a certain level and we all know this as journalists it's ultimately kind of fun to just have the people that you write about do whatever you want them to yeah. rather than the things that they you have to stick to the facts it's so exhausting <laughs> uh, and, and really it's kind of fun to be like you know what you're going to go where I want you to go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make you go where I have, have. And ultimately, though, it's funny because at the end of the day, people believe stuff in uh, real life that they won't believe in fiction. Like in real life, we see insane things all the time. But in fiction, they're like, <clears throat> they would not use that pin. <laughs> I do not believe this book anymore. So yeah. you always have to be more, uh, more hard, hardcore to keep everything straight uh, in a fiction book. Well, congratulations. This one's sure to be another hit. The new book is titled The Time Has Come. Will Leach, always great to have you on the show. Come back soon. Thank Phenomenal. you, Will. Thanks, guys. Great being Thanks, here. Of course. Go Cards. Go luck, Cards. Go, Go Illini. Go Cards. Go Illini. Yeah. We're turning great. things around. Yeah, there. Absolutely. We're getting too deep now. <laughs>